Hey, I'm Stefan Papadakis. Today we're gonna tear down these fuel pumps inside this little black box. Uh, it draws fuel in, it pumps it out at a higher pressure, you use electricity to power it. So let's pull one of these apart and see how it works. So I got a couple of fuel pumps and AEM was nice enough to flow me a couple of these pumps. One of them is the O44 style, which is the larger one. And it's a 400 liter per hour fuel pump. So it pumps 400 liters of fuel per hour. There's actually no screws on these things. So the pumps are not designed to be serviced. Once you break them or they wear out or whatever, you just throw them away and you get a new one. But I did learn how to pull these apart and it includes using our lathe. If you look close, you can see where the crimp is all the way around. We're gonna cut it just below that where the yellow line is. We're gonna use the parting tool. Normally it's for cutting off pieces of tubing or round stock, but we're gonna use it on the pump this time. I'll go ahead and unscrew both of the fittings and we'll clamp it into our lathe. These lathes have a huge amount of settings. Everything from just cutting down round objects, profiling them, but you can also thread material as well. But I just picked 200 RPM to turn the pump at, which is pretty good for cutting a piece of aluminum this diameter. There's not much science going on here. It's just cutting it until we basically see the top pop off. Hopefully it doesn't fly across the shop. Even though the fuel pump is crimped, it still uses seals to keep all the fuel inside. And actually, I'm not just winging it. John Concialdi, one of the founders of AEM, was nice enough to tell me how to do this. Because I guess in their development of these pumps, they'll often run them, they'll run them on test benches, and they'll have to pull them apart to see how they've worn in order to improve them in the future. Inside this top section is where the power comes in, and it goes through these small little wires over to the brushes. And the brushes are pushed in with springs that rub against the commutator. And that's how it gets power onto the armature of the motor and actually makes it spin. And I have seen this stuff before because I used to race RC cars a lot when I was little and the RC car electric motors were built just like this. This would be considered a brushed motor. So these electric motors are, are very similar to the old style RC motors before they went brushless. So really there's two distinct sections on this. We've got the electric motor side and then the pump side. If you look close at the top, you'll see how the positive and the negative come in on these small wires. They come over to the brushes and the brushes are on these springs which push up against the commutator. And you can even see where some of the wear is because this is a used pump. And over the life of the pump, those brushes will actually wear down a bit. They last a really long time, but there is a limited lifespan of it. And then as it turns, it turns the pump section. And the pump section is just this small part here under the white cap. And this is the outlet of the pump. This is where the high pressure comes out. And if you look close, you can see some parts inside there. Let's unscrew it and check out what's inside. I'm not sure if you realize this yet, the fuel actually flows around the entire electric motor. So the entire electric motor is surrounded and cooled by the fuel the whole time. So you might ask, how come the fuel doesn't mess up the electric motor? Why won't it short out? Well, hydrocarbon fuel is not conductive. If you put water through it, it would short it out and the pump wouldn't work. For your engineers out there, it is slightly conductive, but nothing to where it would cause a problem within the motor. And you might ask, well, if there's little sparks, wouldn't it possibly catch on fire inside? Well, you need oxygen and air, and because it's such a rich mixture and it's just fuel inside, it actually can't catch on fire inside either. So that's why you've got fuel going through this pump for years and years, and they've had these things for decades, and they just work really well. So once I get these couple of screws off, we'll get the pump apart, I think. Realize there's another clip that we have to take out, and once we get this E-clip off, the armature would come off the shaft, and if you look close, you can see the two little teeth. Then we get the top cover off, the pump housing, and then inside is the pump rotor. And that's the entire pump right there that can flow enough fuel for over a thousand horsepower on gasoline. One more E-clip, and we can get the rest of the pump apart. So when the electric motor turns, it turns this pump, and that's where the pump gets the power to pump the fuel through. It's actually quite simple. This is what they call a positive displacement roller vane pump. It pulls better than a lot of other pumps, and it can be very good at creating a lot of pressure. For engines that require a lot of pressure, like fuel injection engines that are 40, 60, 80, or even 100 PSI fuel pressure, these roller vane pumps work really well. So this is what we use in our engines. These particular pumps are designed to live with all fuels even up to 100% ethanol, E100 which is one of the upgrades from the old O44 Bosch pumps that were never designed to be worked with ethanol fuels. So now let's pull apart the second pump. This is a little bit different. It's smaller and what they consider like the Walbro style pumps. And these are a little bit quieter 
and still can put out a lot of horsepower worth of fuel, but tend to not work as well at really high pressures like the roller vane pumps. In your street car, you probably have the smaller reactive turbines type pump. They tend to be a little bit more efficient, they're quieter, and not that the other ones don't last a long time, but these are typically a submersed pump that is in most of the street cars. So in this pump, in order to get it all the way apart, I actually have to cut both ends of it off. So this is the inlet side and the electrical side. You can see a couple of wires that connect the plug with the motor. And then this is the pump section. And you see it's a lot different. It doesn't have that roller vein. This is called a reactive turbine pump. So this is it. This is the whole pump section. And, and this, you can see how, you know, they call it a reactive turbine, but it kind of looks like a little turbine. You know, it's like a little mini jet engine to pump your fuel with. These types of pumps should never be run dry on fuel. They can be damaged in less than 60 seconds. And that's the same for all reactive turbine type pumps. The other end, maybe I didn't cut it in the right place. So I'm gonna cut it a little bit farther back to try to release uh, the motor from inside of the, the can. And obviously I'm having trouble here because these things are not meant to be taken apart, but I think it's worth the effort to see what's going on inside. So I finally got the cap off. And then here's the electric motor section. And this one, the magnets don't come out. It's actually part of the can. So just like the other fuel pump, this one also uses brushes that rub on the commutator, but instead of it being outside radially, this one's on the top. And now this is the pump section. So the way the pump works is as fuel on one side of the turbine, it pulls it through and it pushes it against the other side of the plate and starts rotating and compressing it and pushing it through that hole, which creates the higher pressure. And you can see how there's all these small little parts and little springs, and if it's some dirt or something gets in there, it can start making it not able to turn. So if you ever see somebody trying to hit their electric motor or their fuel pump or something with a little with a hammer to try to get to work and it actually does fix it, it's because inside it could just get stuck on something. When you hammer it, it can jar it loose and all of a sudden your fuel pump works again. So I hope you liked it. If you did, please like and subscribe. If you want to see me tear down other stuff, put that in the comment down below and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.